Gabriel Bortoleto, the fresh FIA Formula 3 victor, is already causing waves in the world of motorsport. Not officially affiliated with a Formula 1 team, his connection with the top Grand Prix star, Fernando Alonso, could well pave his way testing in F1 or Formula E within the next year. Shockingly, this was Bortoleto's debut season in F3, following in the wheel tracks of Oscar Piastri. The young racer is gobsmacked at his own achievement, considering it a dream come true. With a heart-stopping season finale at Monza, Bortoleto hung onto his championship lead by a mere point. He owes his F3 championship success not to outright dominance, but to consistent performances, including even a podium drought. He credits his composure to his mentor, none other than Fernando Alonso himself. With this being his fourth year in single-seater racing, the question looming on everyone's mind now is whether Bortoleto can replicate his phenomenal success if he moves up to Formula 2 in 2024. Exciting times, indeed. All right, everyone. This is your host Enzo on the F1 Motor Fever podcast, and with me is our season commentator and all-round motor racing guru, William. We're here every day at 3 in the afternoon and 7 in the evening, serving up the hottest topics in motorsport on a silver platter. If you love what we do here, please subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and don't shy away from sharing your thoughts in the comments. And, of course, do share us with your friends and family if you think they'd enjoy our content as much as you do. It's a huge help in keeping the wheels turning here at the F1 Motor Fever podcast. Couldn't agree more, Enzo. Always a delight to be part of the conversation. And, ladies and gentlemen, just hold on to your hats. I assure you, you won't believe what we have coming up today. I mean, the latest news from the F3 circuit is something you aren't going to want to miss. I find it a must-know for anyone who's into motorsport, especially if you're keeping tabs on the fresh talents. So, foot down. Hold tight. Here we go. Felipe? Vicente? Cue the jingle, please. So, let's dive deeper into the journey of Gabriel Bortoleto. The new FIA Formula 3 champion, at just 18 years of age, seems to be on the fast track, pun intended. As we mentioned before, Bortoleto is a mentee of none other than Fernando Alonso. His part of Alonso's A14 management stable and that affiliation could pave the way for Bortoleto to test drive in either F1 or Formula E in the next 12 months. It's a rather fascinating prospect, isn't it, Enzo Watts? The young lad has taken the F3 crown in his rookie season. Something that reminds us of Oscar Piastri's achievement. I was reading an interview with him and he admitted that he's yet to realize the magnitude of his achievement. Yes, quite right, William. Prior to this win, Bortoleto's major achievements were in karting. Winning the Brazilian Open at two levels and finishing as runner-up in the WSK Super Master Series for OK Junior Karts. But his F3 championship win, that's his first title in racing cars. He entered the season finale in Monza with a lead of 38 points, making his victory almost inevitable. You know, Enzo, I've never really thought about it from that angle. It's one thing to be a frontrunner in karting, but to transition from that to racing cars, and then not just to compete but to take the title in your debut season, it's quite a feat it's something worth pondering indeed. Taking a side note, folks, our chat about Bortoleto's fantastic journey was inspired by an insightful piece I perused on the RaceFans site. The article, penned by Ida Wood, really shed some light on Bortoleto's journey and how a simple message from Alonso set him on a course for the F3 title. That's great, Enzo Watts. RaceFans is indeed a reliable source for in-depth motorsport content. But as is always the case, folks, it's essential to cross-reference information, just to be on the sure side. Absolutely, William. Now, back to our conversation. Continuing on Bortoleto's journey, it seems his season was characterized by a blend of victories, podium finishes and, remarkably, a streak where he was off the podium but managed to preserve his robust championship lead. After his win in Melbourne, he went five races without a podium finish but still managed to play second in the Red Bull Ring feature race, starting from third on the grid. It seems the young chap has a knack for gaining positions under pressure. Indeed, Enzo. His performance in Silverstone was a clear testament to that. Despite starting eighth on the reversed grid, he managed to finish second. That's a gain of six positions, the second time he achieved that feat in 2023. Exactly, William. And it should be noted that it was during these times that Bortoleto was able to lean on the guidance of his manager, Fernando Alonso. Bortoleto credits a lot of his success to the advice he received from Alonso, especially in dealing with the inevitable highs and lows of a racing season. 
It's interesting to see how Bortoleto's career has progressed. Starting his single-seater racing career back in 2020 in Formula 4, he's seen a lot of the same faces on the track, competing against the same drivers he faced in the European and World Championships for OK Junior Karts in 2018. A testament to the small world of motorsport, indeed. And let's not forget his leap from Italian F4 to the Formula Regional European Championship with Alonso's FA Racing Team. But back to Alonso's influence on Bortoleto. It's interesting how Alonso's advice to Bortoleto was not just about winning each race but also about accepting the times he might not be on top and focusing on accumulating the points he needs. That's some sound advice from a seasoned professional. As we reflect on Bortoleto's journey, there are a few standout moments. Despite scoring only once in his first 12 races of Formula Regional European Championship, he managed a second-place finish and points finishes in five other later races. All of this led to him climbing up to 15th in the standings. Quite the turnaround, wouldn't you say, William? Absolutely, Enzo. Bortoleto's tenacity is evident in his trajectory. And remember, he switched to the reigning champion team Ice GP for 2022. He also managed a victory in his second Formula Regional Asian Championship round. Even after missing more than half of the season, he ended up at 14th in the championship. Quite impressive, I'd say. Certainly, William. And upon his return to FIEC, he scored two wins, three podiums, and two poles. In 2023, he left his rivals behind as he climbed the ranks in F3. He's certainly shown a knack for improving his game at each level. And now, the million-dollar question, can Bortoleto repeat this feat if he steps up to Formula 2 for 2024? Only time will tell. But if his performance so far is anything to go by, we're in for a treat. Absolutely. It will be fascinating to see if Bortoleto can carry this momentum forward. But for now, let's just congratulate him on clinching the F3 title and eagerly await what the future holds for this promising young driver. William, have you had a chance to scour the internet for today's hot topic? Indeed, I have, Enzo Watts. Today, our topic comes from user Joven Milik 97 who stated, Mick Schumacher criticizes Gunter Steiner, I didn't get support. This has sparked quite a bit of dialogue. Ah, controversy is always a good conversation starter. Absolutely. User Free Tote Bag chimed in, I'm not gonna defend mixed driving, he seems like a nice guy but it was expensive when he crashed out. But I wouldn't be surprised if Steiner sucked to work with. I know he's some kind of mean, but he seems difficult to be around. That's an interesting perspective. And what's the response? User Jimmy Dashku replied, saying, in a bizarre series of events, I hung out with his family a couple of years ago and they had nothing but nice things to say about Mick the entire time. They even invited me to meet with him the next day. I think the costly wrecks and comments from journalists close to Mick likely added stress to the situation which made it the way it was. An interesting take. Any other notable comments? Yes, Azure underscore IIXV mentioned, a good personality doesn't make you immune to underperformance. While DC added, often in the workplace, getting fired doesn't mean the individual is a bad person, just bad at their job. In Mick's case, he sucked at his job, which was to not crash. Well, it certainly seems like a heated debate on the internet. It's always fascinating to hear different perspectives on these matters. Absolutely, and it shows that being a Formula 1 driver is more than just about driving skills. It's also about managing relationships and navigating the politics of the sport. That's it for today's episode of F1 Motor Fever Podcast, folks. We've thoroughly enjoyed discussing the recent race and Bortoleto's impressive journey. We thank you for choosing us as your source of Formula One chatter. Your support is what fuels us to bring you engaging and insightful talks daily. And remember, we're here every day at 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the evening. And trust me, you don't want to miss what we have lined up for the rest of the week. It's more exciting than a last lap overtake. Absolutely, William. And let's not forget the fantastic team behind the scenes. Big thanks to Felipe, Vicente, and the whole technical crew for making all of this possible. Indeed, they're the pit crew that keeps this Formula One podcast running smoothly. And speaking of smooth, we're already revving the engines for the next episode. You definitely don't want to miss that. But until then, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share our content far and wide. Leave us a comment and tell us what you thought of today's episode. It's always a pleasure to engage with our listeners. So until tomorrow, remember our motto, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold. Roll the vinet. See you tomorrow, folks. <laughs>